Hi, this is Phoenix with Northside IT, and we handle managed IT, cloud solutions, email marketing, and website design. Now, get that out of the way. I recently set up a new IIS server or web server, Windows web server, using Server 12 to um, Amazon Web Services. And I, I didn't really have everything set up just right, but I still want to get the site designed or transferred over. So the first one I got transferred over, and uh, it's a WordPress blog that has an uploads directory like they all do. And uh, the permissions, I screwed up the permissions. I remo removed the inherited permissions and did some other things. So I had to go back in and recreate them all, which is kind of, it's it just a little time consuming because you got to go back and see exactly what is supposed to be there and what isn't supposed to be there. So what I did, it would have been a lot easier to have shadow copy, just copy it over. But I didn't have it installed because it's not, it doesn't come pre-configured in server 12. And it just doesn't take up much hard drive space, especially with, you know, how much is available now. So it's something to think about. Every time you crank one up, that should be on your checklist. Um, go ahead and set up shadow copy, especially in the beginning, because any little fluke can really mess it up, especially when it's so easy to configure. So this is a beginner level thing. It's real easy. You just uh, right click on the start menu, go to your computer management, shared folders, and right click all tasks. And say your shadow copy. Currently disabled. Go ahead and enable it. It already created one for you. Boom. Done. Simple as that. Now, when you're in here and you make a mistake, you can just right click on it. Store previous version. And you don't even have to do it directly in this directory. If there's just a file you want, you can open it up see what you want and just pull it out. Copy it over your desktop, edit it a little bit, whatever you need to do. Um, but that can change your file permissions, remember that. So we're going to close out of that, close out of that, and that's it. That's how you install Shadow Copy on Server 12. If you're using the core installation of Server 12, then to get uh, Shadow Copy to work, you're going to have to install it with PowerShell. Let's go ahead and do that. And PowerShell is administrator. Clean it up a little bit. Get it centered. Take a look a little better. And then we'll start off with the commands you'll use. It's going to be VFS admin, which is going to be your primary command. And if you want to see kind of the GUI, the quick and easy GUI, you can go to VFS. Oh, UI, right, I believe. Yep, there it is. And it looks like it's already enabled. I'm just going to do a quick save more of it real quick. There you go. Now, so let's get back to business. First thing you have to do is you're going to have to create a shadow storage before you can actually create a shadow copy. So let's go ahead and go to the admin and we'll add shadow storage. And you're going to add it for. C drive, and I'm going to go ahead and keep it on root. So there we go. Now we need to set our max size. Gotta put our switch in there. Max size. It's going to be. Let's run percentages. That's kind of a nice thing you can do in PowerShell. Let's go ahead and set it to 30%. And it's automatically going to set the hard drive space. I'll take 30% and dedicate it to uh, PowerShell or get it ready to be dedicated to PowerShell. So there we go. Now, so we've got our storage association created. Now let's go ahead and create a uh, copy. So we're going to do something very similar. It's just BFS admin create shadow. Now we've got to set the location of it. So we're going to do it for C. Something I'll show you on this one too. Um, let's go ahead and make a mistake so we can take a look. You can add an auto retry if you want. That's another switch that's in there. I just wanted to show you that because you know Windows can be a little finicky sometimes. So if we add that auto retry in there, we know when the scheduled task runs, it's going to try at least twice. And then we can check out our logs later on to find out if something's not working right. So that's just a little 
it bit. And then if you'll go through, the rest of these are really easy. I'm not going to go through your queries and your reverts, the self-explanatory. But what I will go through is I'm going to bring up the DSS user interface again. And take a look. See, it's still showing disabled. And, but you can see that we do have a copy. And if we were to bring up something like this, we could restore a previous version. So, those are things that we can just kind of easily run through. Now we can go to the settings here and take a look that it already did bring out 30% of the hard drive. We can change it here if we want. Um, 300 is the minimum, but you're going to have to set it to 320 before it'll save it. And we can go ahead and keep going from there. Now, let's talk about scheduled tasks. I'm not going to go through long command writing of doing a scheduled task. So, what I'll do is I'm going to cheat. And I'm going to steal this. Put it here. Now, this is going to go ahead and set up a scheduled task. And I'll put the link for this in the video. So, if you just want to copy and paste it to, you can. I mean, this is again straightforward. It's got the time and date, the name of the file, what you're saving, and where you're saving it. So you can go through those and edit it as you need to. And then we'll enter it, and it's going to tell us that we had an success. A success. Bring up our uh, scheduled task or our task scheduler, and we do a refresh, and we see the afternoon snapshot was saved, and it is successfully in there. So that's essentially it when it comes to shadow copying and getting it to work through PowerShell.